People keep saying that Apple is ripping us off with the 8 gigabyte M3 14 inch MacBook Pro and they might be right. And today we will find out because I have this 8 gigabyte model in an identical one but with 16 gigs on the right hand side. So we're going to do a bunch of real world tests and we're going to see just how bad is the base model or is it a great value? Now thankfully when we opened these up we saw that they used two NAND chips and that means that the SSDs are not going to be slowing down the system like with the M2 machines. And typically if you're just running benchmarks you don't see much of a difference which is why I always like to use multitasking real world tests. One thing that I have found is when we're going from the M1 to the M2 chip and now to the M3 when you have more performance it requires more RAM and I was shocked that even in Cinebench Bench, we are getting a higher score just running that benchmark with the only difference being RAM. That is an 11% difference in performance and I have never seen that. And then with Blender, we also were getting crashes on the 8 gig version and some of you reached out and said that's because there's not enough RAM for the performance of that chip. So this is getting crazy. Now I'm going to start out with restarting both of these machines to make sure we have nothing extra loaded in the background and right after the restart start our 16 gig one is using more RAM because it has more air to breathe compared to only having eight. Now I'm going to start out by opening up some websites. I have Google Drive, I have YouTube. Let's do an MKBHD video in the background because I often am listening to a podcast or a video or music and then a website. A lot of these will have ads that will replay and this is a much more real world way to test instead of having nothing open but one benchmark. And now this is speedometer 2.1. It's going to test responsiveness for web browsing and using web-based applications. And both of these are great scores, but you can see the 8 gig is already being slightly less responsive with just a few things open. And many of you guys say you never have five things open. You have 20, 30, 40 different tabs, especially those that care about productivity. And now I have Blender opened up right here and I'm going to go ahead and do this render test. Keep in mind there's almost nothing else in the background. And unfortunately, just like before, we got a crash here. People are saying it's because of not enough graphics memory for the performance, whereas the 16 gig is doing this render. Now there's really no point to compare this performance because it's not running. But one thing that I noticed is when we go into the settings, the 16 gig gives us the ability to use ray tracing that comes with the M3, but the 8 gig one, that is not even there. And looking at a RAM usage, the 8 gig model is actually writing RAM to the SSD in the form of swap because it doesn't have enough RAM, whereas the 16 gig is not having an issue. And I've seen this kind of thing before where certain programs will not give you full acceleration if you don't have enough RAM. And now I have Adobe Lightroom class opened with 50 edited images. Let's check out our responsiveness. Of course, we have fast SSDs in these machines. Both of them are doing pretty well. And keep in mind, we have not much open in the background. And now let's go ahead and export 50 of these images. And 50 is actually not very much. There's one guy that's a photographer, tests a thousand at one time. And when I did wedding photography, we would sometimes do a thousand, two thousand. And look at that right there. Look how much faster the 16 gig is going. In this case, even the 16 gig is using some swap, but not 5.6 gigabytes bytes like we are on the 8 gig. All right guys, wow. So now we already tested it out with nothing running but Lightroom. It took a minute and 40 seconds. So we see it slowed down just by having five web browsing tabs open. But the 16 gig version, even with that, took a minute and six seconds, which pretty much matches up with an M2 Pro MacBook Pro performance. That's more cores, more graphics performance. That is impressive and that right there shows you that 16 gigs really unlocks the M3 chip even without having multiple programs opened up. Now, no matter which Mac you have, our sponsor's app, Clean My Mac X, is the only app you need to keep your Mac running like new. I bought and have been using it for four years now on many Macs because it is the easiest and quickest way to protect, optimize, and clean your Mac. It deletes files quickly and automatically, including hidden leftover junk files, which is important, but the Lens tool also finds junk you didn't know about, like 55 gigabytes of backups that was way 
wasting space. It could also update apps, clean up cache, monitor health, and protect from Trojans, data miners, and hijackers. The feature I use most is the menu app to monitor my Mac, and when it feels slow, free up my memory with just one click. Clean My Mac X is rarely discounted, but for this Black Friday season, they have the best deal that I've seen, so don't miss out and use the link in the description to get 30% off annual licenses for yourself and as a gift for your loved ones, you will be glad that you did. And now let's take this a step further and open up Chrome here with some more web browsing tabs, much more like a typical person would be using. And I also opened up a few emails and a few spreadsheets and Google Docs here. So we have a total of 20 various tabs. I also found this interesting article on Mac rumors where Apple is saying that eight gigs on a MacBook is the same as 16 gigs on a PC. So you shouldn't be upset with eight gigs. This is perfect timing. And now I saw a delay opening Lightroom on the eight gig compared to the 16 gig and switching photos, the 16 gig is more responsive and the same thing when I zoom in, the 16 gig is instant. Even hitting the file tab to do an export test, everything is just taking longer. And rendering again, the 16 gig is flying before the eight gig even starts. Now, while we are doing this, let's do some multitasking. Let's switch through these tabs. You guys can see how much quicker the 16 gig model is. The eight gig is taking dramatically longer having to reload that from its SSD, even though the SSD is much quicker than before. And it looks like our Lightroom export is done on the 16 gig model. I pressed this one first, this one opened up first, and this thing is what, 20%, not even 15% done maybe? The 16 gig didn't slow down at all compared to the first test, so let's go ahead and do this again and we'll see if it can actually loop the eight gig model. Look at this, the 16 gig is done, whereas the eight gig is at about half. So that means that the 16 gig can do this four or five times before the eight gig does it one time. And if you guys check out this performance right over here, you can see that with the 16 gig, we were maximizing our graphics cores using a lot of CPU, whereas the eight gig model is using about half of the CPU and half of the GPU because it simply doesn't have enough RAM to be able to run at full performance. All right, guys, I waited until this machine finished and that took five minutes and 16 seconds compared to two minutes when we did the test the first time or a minute 47 when there was no application open other than Lightroom. Whereas the 16 gig, even with all that open in the background, it took a minute and six seconds and it was looping it. That is crazy. Now I was gonna push this much harder like I've done with other systems, but we know it's just gonna get worse and worse. And now I have Final Cut Pro open. I closed down Lightroom and I have this five minute ProRes RAW project and these chips have really great encoders and decoders. And now let's go ahead and export this five minute project. Theoretically, they should be running at the same same speed and as you guys can see they are practically running at the same performance just slightly behind on the 8 gig model that took a minute and 30 seconds compared to a minute and 25 barely any difference and looking at our RAM usage, closing down Lightroom that helped a lot. Both are using some of the SSD as RAM, but way less than before. So for video editing, if you're working with regular footage or ProRes, it's gonna be fairly good as long as you don't have massive timelines or multicam. Now it's when you're working with heavier projects, we have 1% exported compared to eight to 9%. Right now we're looking at 4% compared to 16. So that is what, four times uh, faster? A pretty huge difference. That took about five minutes compared to over 20 minutes. And if you're like me, you're not gonna be sitting there waiting, you're gonna be multitasking. So let's open up Photoshop and look at that. Our export right here just completely failed when I tried to open up Photoshop. That is a bummer. Let's go ahead and open up my panorama project over here and I will start the merge. Wow guys, the 16 gig is flying through this and remember, we're not uh, exporting that video anymore, we're just running Photoshop here. All right guys, that took a minute and 20 seconds compared to a minute and 53. 
And the only difference is that we have 16 gigs of RAM compared to eight gigabytes. And that shows me enough right there that if I was using this system, I would have more things open in the background to be able to multitask and be productive and the performance would be even greater between these two machines. And to answer the original question, should Apple be selling an eight gig for $1,600 when it's almost 2024? And after doing these tests, it is even worse than I expected. And I would say, no, they should not be doing that. Now, unfortunately, that would mean that they would charge probably 1800 instead of 1600. They don't really give you free discounts. Everything is priced the way Apple wants it to be. And if you want to buy one of these machines and you are somebody who does productivity and multitasks, you absolutely need to get the 16 gig version. But in that case, you're almost at the price of the M3 Pro that comes with 18 gigs of RAM and a lot of other capabilities. So if you guys wanna see how the M3 compares to the M3 Pro in a 14 inch, make sure you guys click that circle above to subscribe. Check out one of those videos right over there. This has been Max and I'll see you in the next one.